Hi guys, this is Takhari. I welcome you to this video tutorial on learning how to install Microsoft SQL Server on a Docker container. And to install Microsoft SQL on a Docker container on Mac, which is running operating system Mac OS Mojave, you would first need to go and search for Docker application for Mac, so Docker for Mac, and then you would need to go and download Docker. Once you have downloaded Docker, you would need to go ahead and install it. So let's click on this download Docker for Hub. And here it says, please log in to download. So go ahead, put in your user ID and password and click sign in. So when you sign in, you will see this option here or this button here which says get docker. So click on get docker. I have previously created a video on installing MS SQL Server on a Docker container where there were many questions in the comment section that were being asked for by some users who could not start the container. And that's the reason why I am creating uh, this video tutorial again. And in this video tutorial, I will be installing Docker container for MS SQL Server on Mac OS Mojave. So the previous tutorial, we installed it on High Sierra. The procedure is the same that we are going to follow, but this operating system is the latest one by Mac. So I'm going to use Docker on this uh, Mac OS Mojave, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So once this is downloaded, all you have to do is go and show this file in your finder which will probably be in your downloads double click and run this application so we can close the browser and we don't need the downloads so here once you run this application you should see something like this which says the application docker itself which is a whale like icon you just drag and drop this on your applications once you have dragged and dropped the docker on your applications go and double check if it is transferred so here you see now it's transferred and i can see the icon let's run this docker and we can close this installer by going to finder and you can eject the installer you don't need it now let's go ahead and first thing that we want to do is click on open and here we are going to get to this message which says docker we are happy that we have you click next click ok and enter your password click ok now you should see this icon over here which tells you that you need to log in but you don't have to you can just wait for docker to start so as it says docker is starting because it is starting in the process of starting so you would not see the available option until it has started so let's wait for it to start so now let's go here and after Docker has been started. You will see Docker desktop is running. The next thing that you want to do is in these options itself, in the options on the icon itself, you'll see something called a Skytmatic. Now this is an GUI, which is a graphical user interface that we are going to use to manage all our containers. As soon as you install any Docker container or you create a container, you will see it on the GUI. You no longer would have to use the terminal to start or turn off your current containers you can use this GUI so let's click on Kitematic Kitematic is compatible with Docker so all you have to do if you want it you have to click on this option here which is highlighted so we'll click here and then you will see the browser downloading the Kitematic application in your downloads folder so let's go to the downloads folder inside the downloads folder you will see the Kitematic application all you have to do is click on kitematic drag and drop it on your applications 
and you can just close this kitematic window and now if you go to your applications you should see kitematic there let's go ahead and run kitematic let's open it now the GUI will look something like this you can log in to see all your images that you created or you can just skip for now and here you will have the options to create containers so to create containers for any server or any OS you will have images available here that's pre-populated by the Kitematic application so let me just maximize this so if you see here uh, you'll have some images for MariaDB, MySQL, PostgreSQL and different kind of databases in OS so now what I'm going to search for is MS SQL and I will have different images created by different users and there will be official images by Microsoft SQL as well so what we are going to do is we are going to click or create click on the create option here and if you see there's 16 million downloads for this so we're going to use this official image so let's go ahead and click on the create button here and now it's connecting to docker hub where it's downloading the image for us once it is downloaded we will get back and continue the installation process so once your image for the ms sql server linux is downloaded you will see something like this in your docker container now the first thing that we want to do is click on this ms sql server linux and then go to settings and here we need to provide some information for our container so here we are going to first change the name of our sql server container so we are going to call this sql underscore server or I can just call this as MS SQL server underscore server you can name this whatever you like so I'm just going to call it MS SQL underscore server now I'm going to save this also now the environment variables usually in if you watch my last video tutorial where I or the video tutorial where I previously installed SQL server on a Mac using docker container I was entering these values using the terminal command but now I don't need to do that I can do that from kitematic itself so the first environment variable that I'm going to set is to accept the end user license agreement so I'm going to say accept underscore EULA and here I'm going to set the value is Y which means yes I'm going to add another environment variables and keep in mind you need to set these values in order for your container to work so we have to provide a system admin password so sa underscore password and you will use the same keys you cannot change the names of these keys and the sa underscore password will be any password for your docker container so i'm going to call it docker sql 123 sometimes docker gives an error saying that the password does not meet the requirement so all you can do is add an exclamation at the end but for now i will leave it as docker sql123 and we will see if we get an error next thing that we want to add is the path which is already added so we have the end user license agreement and the password for our sa we're just going to save this now and the next thing that we want to do is go to your host name and ports and if you see that the port is already set to 1433 as soon as we saved it the local host is 1433 for our docker container so now what we want to do we want to do is you want to go ahead and download a GUI application called as Azure Data Studio that is going to help us to connect to this MS SQL server so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to connect oh well, I'm going to download an application Azure Data Studio and here the first 
link that we got from Google will take us to the Microsoft's official website and here we are going to download the zip file for Mac OS for Azure Data Studio and I leave the links in the video description in case if you can't find it through Google. So we'll wait for this application to download and then we'll get back to installing it. So we'll have the DMG file or the zip file sorry downloaded in the downloads folder. Go ahead and double click so it can unzip it. And once it's unzipped we will see the Azure Data Studio application itself. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this into our applications because we will need this all the time in order to communicate with our database. Now the next thing that you want to do is go ahead and double click and run this application. Now you'll have something like this on your screen. So what you want to do is quickly go ahead and type your server name. In this case, your server name is your local host. And the authentication type is going to be SQL login and the username is SA. You can find this here in your general options. We just set the username for SA and the password is Docker SQL3. So Docker SQL123. Now let's connect to our server and make sure your server is started and it's not stopped because previously I have been getting these questions where users have not started their server and trying to connect it and there is an error being thrown. So let's connect now after the server is started. All you have to do is click this button here which will say start. So let's click connect. As you see the as uh, you, there will be immediately an impression that this there is something wrong because it shouldn't take that long to connect to a server locally. Right? So we know now there is an error. What is that error? If you look at the error, it is saying that verify that instance name is correct and the SQL server is configured to allow remote connections. Provided TCP the error is coming from TCP itself. So read the error. Close. Okay. Then the thing that you want to do is go to your host name and ports. Here itself you can see the mistake. It is running on port number 1433, the Docker port, and the local host is trying to communicate 232772. We need to map 1433 to local host 1433. So any request that is coming to 1433 will be redirected to Docker port. Now save this and then stop your container and start it back again and if you don't do that the changes will not be saved so you have to start changes will be saved but it will not execute unless you start and save uh, start your server again now go back here server is started try to connect and as you see immediately you can connect so if in case you are getting errors try to see if your port number is correct also see that you are entering the correct password if not then go ahead and change it here okay these option needs to be specified here so it's very easy process now to install sql microsoft sql server on docker container using this application called as Critematic. you don't have to go to the steps of adding the codes and commands in terminal so now here you can go ahead and create databases you will have some temporary database here so you see system tables so if you want to run a query on master you can go new query here you can just run the following test query which is select all from this table here which is spt underscore monitor so dbo dot spt underscore monitor and then hit run and here you will see that you have the query executed and you will see the results here at the bottom so play around with your azure data studio create databases and connect to your databases the way i showed you using the azure data studio application and also now if you want to install any extensions like you do in visual studio code editor you can go to the marketplace and search for extensions that can make your life easier as a database administrator so many uh, powerful extensions are available and are being used by admins so you can go ahead and you can search for the ones you need 
and you can install them in Azure Data Studio. So guys, this should be it for this video tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and also all the required links will be provided in the video description. Please like and subscribe our channel Tech Howdy. If you have any questions, use the comment section and do not forget that make sure your container is started before you connect the database on localhost. Thank you very much. Goodbye.